Hello, I'm Emmanuel Cleaver. I'm the representative of Missouri's 5th Congressional District. This February, I hope you'll join me in celebrating Black History Month by recognizing two landmarks in American history, the 150th anniversary of President Abraham Lincoln issuing the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863 and the 50th anniversary of the Civil Rights March on Washington in 1963. The Emancipation Proclamation reflected the principles of our founding fathers that all men are created equal and set the stage for a more perfect union. In 1963, freedom fighters marched on the Lincoln Memorial where Martin Luther King Jr. inspired a nation to rise up against discrimination and by delivering his I Have a Dream speech. And the march on Washington became the catalyst for the continued pursuit of equality for all. The following year, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was passed by Congress to outlaw discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin and move our nation toward fulfilling the promise of the Emancipation Proclamation. These remain important, illustrious markers of our movement. And yet, I admit, I become frustrated when I hear someone refer to the Civil Rights Movement as a part of history. While we made tremendous progress, there is still more work that needs to be done. Why is it that we began with such enthusiasm and moved slowly into gradualism? An experience with my youngest son gave me insight into this. After we bought him his first car, I received a phone call asking me to come to a certain location because his car had stopped. So I quickly ran to the garage, grabbed my jumper cables, and rushed to his location. After tinkering with the battery, the starter, and carburetor, I discovered that after all that, he was simply out of gas. And maybe that is what has happened to us as a people. On our way toward the fulfillment of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream, we just ran out of gas. Maybe we're just tired of being proud, tired of being demanding and disciplinary parents, tired of voting in mass, tired of sticking together, tired of struggling to rid ourselves of the bigotry that has burrowed itself deep inside the American psyche. Losing battles here and there is natural, but those losses can delay but not deter realizing Dr. King's dream. We must press on and keep pressing. Your help is needed. This is a call to arms. If you can't fly, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. If you can't crawl, then scoot. As we run this race, we ought to be thankful for and inspired by the great cloud of witnesses, that is fans who've gone ahead of us. Yes, we have fans now in high places. In addition to our families, there's Martin Luther King Jr. standing on the balcony in glory, pulling for us. Can't you hear him? Come on, people, we still have work to do. Come on, we have miles to travel before we rest. We still have battles to wage. King is saying, I know that it is exhausting, frustrating, and even confusing, but no matter what, don't throw in the towel. Keep reaching, keep running, Keep stretching, keep fighting, keep pressing, keep studying, keep arguing, keep proposing, keep defending, keep believing, keep praising, and keep praying. If we relax, if we allow our enthusiasm to wane, the bullies of bigotry might prevail. We've got them down, and until they surrender, let's not give up, give in, or give out. Thank you very much.